Just like our other tutorials in this series, we will break this design down in terms of workflows, forms, reports, and data, since these are the elements that make up a K2 application. This particular application will have more complex data and forms requirements than the other SharePoint workflow tutorials we've presented up to this point. So make sure you have a good understanding of the design and objectives of these elements before moving on. When building out a process-centric application like expense claim approval, you would normally start with the process map or workflow model. You could use any tool to model the workflow or even just sketch it out by hand. The most important thing before building is to understand the process and what entities need to be created to support the process. Let's start off by looking at the workflow design. This particular application actually has a fairly simple workflow process. We want any user in the organization to be able to submit a new expense claim for approval and processing. They will select the approver for their claim from a limited pool of people and can attach multiple items to that claim. When the form is submitted, the selected approver will review the expense claim and either approve, reject, or query the claim. Now if the claim is approved, it will be forwarded to a group of finance users for processing. If the claim is rejected, the requester will be notified and the workflow will end. And finally, if the claim happens to be returned with a query, the claim will be routed back to the requester so that they can answer that query. Let's actually look at what happens if the claim is queried. The requester can decide whether they want to cancel the claim outright or modify the claim to address the approver's concerns and then resubmit the claim for approval. This query resubmit loop can be executed as many times as is necessary until the claim is approved, rejected, or canceled. If the claim is approved, a group of users will receive a task to process this expense claim. Then at this point, the first user who picks up the task can decide to reject the claim as well. Maybe this is because they noticed something that the original approver did not notice or they can perform the necessary tasks in the reimbursement system and mark the claim as processed. In addition to the user tasks I just described, K2 will update the status of the list item in SharePoint so that users can track where their claim is in the process. K2 will also send out email notifications to notify the requester when their claim is approved, rejected, or processed. That should do it for the workflow for this application, so let's move over to the forms. For this application, we will build completely custom forms using K2 Smart Forms, which gives us much more control over the form layout, behavior, and workflow integration than if we were to use SharePoint Forms out of the box. Also, when you want to integrate with external systems like we will in this application, you will most likely use Smart Forms in most of your situations, mainly because SharePoint Forms will not be as easily configurable to point to those external systems. In this application, we have four forms that are used for each step of the workflow where a user is involved. When designing forms, a good approach to use is to mock up the form layout first and then add some notes about the form's behavior. You can use any tool to do this design and layout work that you want. What is important is to design the various fields that should be available on the form, describe how those fields are used, and then describe how the form behaves. Let's review the first form in this application, the new expense claim form. It's going to be used to capture and submit a new expense claim for approval. Notice the callouts mapped to the form here on my screen with the intent to describe the basic layout and behavior of this form. This form is a classic master detail, or in other words, header line items form, where the user enters some global information about the claim such as the claim's name, and then adds one or more line items to the claim. The requester can attach as many line items as they would like to the claim before submitting it. Think in terms of a travel expense claim. There are usually multiple expenses for a business trip, and it's more efficient to submit all the expenses for one trip together as a single claim. We will also allow the requester to attach receipts or invoices to this claim. The line items section will support multiple currencies, and for the purposes of this example, it's going to feature automatic calculation of the equivalent US dollar amount for a given expense, based on the source currency and the date of the expense. The user will also select a category for the expense claim so that finance can generate reports on where money is being spent. 
Finally, we will allow the requester to submit claims on behalf of other users in the case of assistants possibly submitting claims on behalf of their managers. And these people will be able to select the approver for their expense claim from a predefined list of approvers that is defined as a SharePoint group. Integrated with the user task to approve this claim, the Approve Expense Claim form is going to be used in the approval step. The approver will review the information captured by the requester and then just use buttons to indicate their decision. On our form, if the approver decides to reject or query the expense claim, the comments field will be mandatory so that the requester knows why their claim was rejected or queried. And finally, the approver can click on any receipt that is attached to the claim in order to review the document or image associated with it. Now, after the approval step, the workflow will move on to the finance processing step. And this form is going to be used by the finance department to review the claim and then process the expense claim using whatever the payment system will be. For simplicity in this tutorial, and to allow this tutorial to be rebuilt in any K2 environment, there will not be any integration between this form and an actual finance system. If you understand the principles of smart objects, you will know that it is certainly possible to add this integration to the form or workflow if you wish. The finance form is very similar to the approval form, so much so that we will actually use the same form for both steps and just show or hide buttons at the bottom of the form depending on the current step of the workflow. The finance approver can indicate that the claim was processed or they may decide to reject the claim as well, in which case they will have to provide comments back to the requester. The final form that we're going to take a look at is the rework form. This form is going to be used to modify an expense claim if it has been sent back by the approver for rework. Notice that we will include fields to show the approver's comments. And when the form is open, it will automatically populate with the data entered by the requester when they submitted the claim originally. The requester can then modify this data, add, edit, or delete line items attached to the claim, and then resubmit it for approval, or alternatively, they can cancel the claim entirely. The third element involved with our application involves reports. Apart from the standard K2 reports that are always available for K2 applications, we also want to create a dashboard style report that displays at a glance information about the current state of expense claims in the organization. For this sample application, we will use two bar charts to display the following. The number of expense claims submitted over the last 60 days, and the average duration of expense claims submitted over the last 60 days, then we're going to use two list views, one list showing the expense claims that are awaiting approval and another list showing the expense claims awaiting processing by finance. Of course, your reports and dashboard may be much more complicated than the sample we are using in this tutorial, but you should get the basic principles and be familiar with not only using business data along with workflow data on one page, but also using the provided K2 reporting controls on a smart form to create rich graphical representations of workflow data. And finally, let's take a look at the data element for this application. Data is going to be core to this application since we will be combining data from multiple systems transparently into one cohesive application. The diagram here shows the various business objects that will make up the smart objects for our expense claim approval application. Notice that each object has a different data source along with indicators on where the objects are used and lines representing the relationships between these objects. The expense claim header information will be stored in a SharePoint list, and this is the global information for a specific expense claim. Now the line items tied to the expense claim header are going to be stored in a separate storage area called K2 Smartbox. Smartbox is a special type of storage area provided by K2 where you can define your own storage provider without having to worry about creating the underlying tables or methods to access the data. Basically under the covers, Smartbox is actually just SQL database tables that are maintained by K2. Now for the expense category lookup, we are going to use an Azure SQL database to provide the lookup information so that we can categorize expense claim items according to categories defined by our finance department, such as travel expenses, office equipment, employee meals, and so on. In real-world applications, this data could actually come from almost anywhere, 
but for the purposes of this tutorial we will use a database hosted in Azure SQL. This database is intended for tutorial and demonstration purposes only, so be sure that you do not use this information in any of your production systems. For currency lookup, K2 is going to provide a sample web service which will be used to look up information to list currencies and provide currency conversion functions. This will be used when users enter the individual line items for an expense claim. I want to go through a couple notes before we move too much farther. The integration data sources used in this application, namely the Azure SQL database that provides the expense category data and the currency web service that provides exchange rate conversion functions, are intended only for tutorial and demonstration purposes as I mentioned before. They are not intended for use in production applications and are not going to be supported or guaranteed available by K2 in the future. And another note, the SQL database used to look up expense categories for this tutorial runs on SQL Azure as well. Connecting to this database will require an open port for port 1433 in your firewall as described in this Microsoft KB article shown here with this link. If you are unable to connect to the provided SQL Azure database, you will need to install the database on a local SQL environment server using the provided SQL scripts located at this link here at help.k2.com. Please contact your SQL database administrator if you need to do this for more information and help. And the web service used by this application for currency lookup also runs on Azure. Now this web service should be accessible through port 80 and unless your organization has strict firewall policies it should be available for use anywhere. If you do need to host this web service internally you can download the source code for the web service from the following location at help.k2.com. Please contact a member of your application development team if this is not you in order to get help to do this in your environment. Lastly, we actually do have a few SharePoint artifacts that we'll need to talk about here real quick. We will define a single SharePoint list called Expense Claim, which will host the K2 application elements and store the Expense Claim header information. The data diagram here defines the various columns that this list will contain, and we will also set up a default view for this list so that users will only see those expense claims where they are the approver or the requester. We will also require a SharePoint group called Expense Claim Approvers that will be used to select the user that must approve the expense claim. This group of users should be limited to users with expense claim sign-off rights in your organization, and you can also include your own username for testing purposes. And the last thing in SharePoint that we will create is a SharePoint group called Expense Claim Processing that will be used to route tasks to the finance team for processing of approved expense claims. This group of users typically involves finance or your HR department, but you can also include your own username for testing purposes throughout this demo. We hope that this overview helps you get a good picture of what you'll need to do to complete this tutorial. When you're ready, move on to part one of the build guide where you will move through the steps needed to prepare your SharePoint site for creation of a K2 application. This includes adding the K2 Appit or K2 for SharePoint app to your site and configuring it. Then you will add the K2 Worklist app part to the landing page of your site. 